Uh, hi, I am Claire Ko and, and I'm a postdoc working in the chem lab in MIT. Um, I'm very excited to come back and have this presentation as I was a part of EBICS during my PhD in Kong and Bashir labs in UIUC. Um, today I will talk about building neuromuscular M cells, focusing on what we should consider when we engineer the NMJ unit in an in, in vitro environment. Uh, first of all, why do we want to build NMJ in an in vitro system? Uh, when building biohybrid machines, uh, we usually incorporate cardiac or skeletal muscle into the system for actuation. Um, by having a modern unit, we can have a control switch. So uh, furthermore, this is also useful to sense and respond to the surrounding environment. So many groups in EBICS um, actually have already uh, shown interesting results by adding NMJ to different biobots, such as swimming bots and walking bots. Um, from the perspective of tissue regeneration and building a disease model system, um, NMJ engineering could be used to study neurodegenerative um, diseases such as ALS, SMA, and some other kind of diseases. Thus, this has the potential to be used for personalized disease models. And the CAM lab has previously shown an ALS model system in a microfluidic device, uh, which is shown here. Um, then why, uh, when we engineer NMJ, um, what should we um, consider? Um, the two major components are the motor neurons and the skeletal muscle. Uh, the motor neurons and skeletal muscles can be derived from different sources, including iPSCs, primary cells, or the tissue itself. Uh, once we decide on the cell source, uh, we co-culture the motor neurons um, and skeletal muscle to form NMJs. Uh, the innervation process usually takes um, about seven days in minimum, and um, it naturally occurs. However, um, would there be other ways to efficiently improve um, this process? Uh, in fact, it is really important to think about how NMJs are developed in an actual in vivo environment. So in the body, the myogenic cells migrate to sites of muscle formation, uh, where they differentiate into myoblasts and further into myocytes before fusing to form uh, myotubes. Following guidance cues from the environment surrounding um, the axon's trajectory and the target muscle, axons and motor neurons extend into the target and innervate um, to the myofibers. Um, therefore, when building an NMJ um, in an in vitro system, providing microenvironments to form a line myofiber would aid NMJ formation. Um, in fact, it, it was um, found that the skeletal muscle patterning um, or um, helping the myotubes to form a line, a line structure um, helps NMG formation and um, and oh uh, yeah and this also helps um, to improve skeletal muscle function and it was actually published um, a year ago in Advanced Science. Um, also, we can incorporate um, factors naturally released from the motor neurons to to the surrounding environment. Uh, for example, agarin is a heparin sulfate um, proteoglycan secreted by the nerve terminal. This, significant, um, this is significant for um, acetylcholine cluster stabilization um, in the postsynaptic skeletal muscle and NMJ formation. And um, actually recently a paper was published to show the uh, presence of agarin around the skeletal muscle actually aids um, acetylcholine receptor patterning and NMJ formation. Um, from these results, we can see there are ways to improve the neural innervation process and effectively engineer NMJ in an in vitro system. Um, these previous and current slides focus only on um, the motor neuron and skeletal muscle itself. Um, then would there be other tissues or cells um, that should be considered when building NMJs? And I want to say yes. Um, in fact, incorporation of Schwann cells could be also considered in NMJ engineering. So actually the non-myelinating um, Schwann cells at the motor and nerve terminals, which extend to the skeletal muscles, um, are um, present around the NMJ. Um, these are known to be essential for neuromuscular um, synaptic development, um, maintenance, and repair. So as you see here, um, the Schwann cells are colored in yellow, and these are present at the neuromuscular junctions. 
Um, the Schwann cells around NMJ are known to engulf degenerating nerve and release neurotransmitters when motor neurons, axons, or skeletal muscles are damaged. Um, in addition, the Schwann cells form a path to the motor neurons to form NMJs. Thus, these facts show the presence of Schwann cells may help NMJ formation. And in fact, a re recent study, um, which is marked right here, have shown additional uh, addition of Schwann cells to motor neuron and skeletal muscle improved development of NMJs. Um, therefore, addition of Schwann cells to the co-culture system may actually provide a more physiologically relevant model and also improve NMJ formation, leading to en enhanced muscle functionality. Uh, lastly, I want to mention the vasculature around the skeletal muscle. Um, so although skeletal muscle vasculature uh, may not directly communicate with NMJ, it plays a significant role in its skeletal muscle metabolism and function. Um, the vasculature, in fact, um, developed together with the skeletal muscle fibers um, when the muscles are forming um, fi uh, a line structure and is oriented um, parallel to the muscle fibers. So if you see the image right here, you can see that um, the capillaries are um, grown in parallel with the skeletal muscle um, tissue. Um, in the in vitro model systems, presence of vasculature or endothelial networks has shown to support myogenic differentiation and also the function of the skeletal muscle. Um, therefore, adding the vasculature component to the skeletal muscle may actually help improving skeletal muscle um, contraction um, to show more relevance in the in vivo system. Um, so I think by having a um, vasculature around the muscle and co-culture that with the motor neurons, um, we can improve the functionality and um, efficiency of neural innervation. So in conclusion, the ultimate goal for engineering an MJ in an in vitro system um, would be to improve actuation or function of the biohybrid machines or make more physiologically relevant model systems for tissue regeneration. Um, I wanted to actually emphasize in this presentation that we have to consider uh, many other factors rather than simply co-culturing the motor neurons and the skeletal muscle to achieve these goals. Um, so this would be the end of my presentation. Um, thank you for listening. And um, if you have any comments, um, opinions, or questions, um, please feel free to email me anytime. Thank you.